Hi, good morning. I'm here with Gary Ann from Wuros. Gary is the CEO for the company. So Gary, thank you so much for your time uh, speaking to me uh, on behalf of the MVNO Asia Congress. And could you tell us a bit more about uh, Wuros and your role at the company, please? Yes, thank you, Alex. Hi there, my name is Gareth, and um, I would like to uh, be part again of the MVNO conference uh, to highlight and show our latest developments in uh, global roaming solutions. Uh, we are a Finnish-based company uh, based in the north of Finland uh, where we tap into uh, a lot of experts of the mobile innovations. Uh, we hold many patents ourselves, um, merely in the area of uh, multi-SIM device hotspots. So we are a company uh, who is developing not only hotspots where you can connect um, up to 15 devices when you're roaming, but also we develop smartphones with a dual SIM slot uh, to facilitate global roaming at a very low cost with high bundles. That's what we do. Great. And what is your role with the company as a CEO? What is your What does your day-to-day -day look like? Day-to-day -day is very hectic uh, since we've grown the company globally. Uh, at first, um, yours was selling our devices, which we still do on the website, uh, directly to consumers in a B2C strategy. I changed the strategy a year ago, and today we're selling B2B uh, to mobile operators in MVNO, who then take our devices and sell them to their customers. Uh, so that has been a change of the company, um, which means that today we are engaged with uh, over 100 mobile operators, uh, where we discuss the launch of our services. Uh, these can be small, new startup MVNOs, or these can be really large, big MNOs. So we travel the world, and that keeps us very busy. Are you working uh, in any projects at the moment? Yes, uh, one of the, the key projects we're working on is the implementation of the eSIM. An eSIM is more or less uh, a normal SIM card, but you can put um, additional SIM profiles to the SIM card over the air. So um, instead of having a lot of physical SIM cards in our devices, our devices can hold up to 10 different SIM cards. We also then put over the air additional uh, SIM profiles to the device, uh, whereby we then have even more low-cost data roaming destinations as we have now. Today uh, we cover the world, uh, but still there are more countries we would like to offer to our clients, um, whereby there's no bill shock when they come home after traveling because they always have a kind of a, a fixed amount um, of uh, data for a fixed price. So there's no possibility that you have a horrendous bill shock when you come home. Great. And I see that the traveler's market is a big market for, for us. Can you tell us a bit more about the traveler's market and how does that differ from the European one? Yeah, first of all, the, um, the Asian market is very big, um, it's uh, more fragmented, um, but also it is less regulated. Um, on the other side, we see a growing demand from Asia in outbound traveling, which is very positive for us. Uh, of course, we do see a lot of competition, but interestingly enough, uh, we supply, for example, our services to uh, different uh, Japanese companies who use our devices traveling outbound of Japan. Um, we also started with the first Chinese operator uh, for the global roaming outbound of China. Um, and we see a lot of, um, let's say, tourist destinations growing in the Asia region, uh, like Thailand, uh, where we also prov can provide and support uh, rental services of, uh, of local roaming. What are the key challenges that Euros face or any companies face in the Asia market? Well, I think uh, typically, uh, but that's with the many things, the Asian market is very, um, I would say, competitive. Uh, so pricing is a key issue. Um, but also, um, it's important to have um, local staff in the local language. So we have uh, our people in uh, Singapore, but also employed uh, people in Hong Kong and in Beijing uh, to support the customer demand in the local language. Even in our office, we have uh, Chinese-speaking staff here in the fin north of Finland. Uh, which means that we put a lot of dedication to communication. We think communication is key also in 24-7 support, which we give our customers also in different languages, uh, fitting the uh, the Asia culture and, um, and language um, 
barriers. Yeah. And you mentioned briefly about eSIM. Where um, are yours at with eSIM? When are you looking looking to to bring it to the market? Yeah, the eSIM is a key a key in our roadmap. Um, we have uh, uh, implemented already the eSIM um, in our dual SIM smartphone. Um, so if you go um, outside your own country, you'll be able to uh, tap into, let's say, the second SIM card, which is inserted in the device, and um, then you will have data roaming via our eSIM solution. Um, that solution we are very keen to launch in uh, Asia um, and to show the MVNOs who are attending what kind of solution we have uh, produced based on the um, ZTE uh, smartphones, uh, the S7 series, now the V7 Lite series and the 8 series coming up. So uh, there's a lot of uh, development uh, on the eSIM, but not only will we do that um, in the smartphones of ZTE, we also will have that in our own MiFi devices. Um, and that is, um, that is key for us in the roadmap to keep on adding destinations at low cost. And now talking about the MVNO Asia Congress, tell us a bit, can you give us a taste of what you're going to be speaking about? Yes, well, first of all, um, we have been um, trialing and um, launching with different operators, so we would like to share, uh, first of all, the, the first um, market experiences um, which we had with those operators, and that will benefit uh, the MVNOs in launching. Um, secondly, we have uh, done a lot of research studies uh, amongst mobile operators about the bill shock, and uh, the bill shock with which uh, customers, uh, consumers experience while traveling. I also will share the latest results on that. And finally, um, I will share the roadmap uh, and show a number of devices, a whole portfolio where we're working on, and explicitly um, and especially the uh, devices which are connected always via M2M. You can call it kind of an IoT platform. We are unique in this um, of uh, providing a worldwide IoT platform based on M2M solution whereby um, devices can be steered, activated and even the speed of roam can be throttled over the air. So there's, there's a communication with devices possible uh, in a unique way uh, which has not been done before. So we have many patents cover, covering those technologies um, and I think it's of benefit of the MNOs and MVNOs who are attending to learn more about these IoT platform capabilities uh, to really manage their outbound roaming. We will have a booth there as well and uh, we're happy to attend. It's not the first time, so we had a very good traction last year, so we're really happy to be in Singapore soon again. And why do you think events like the MVNO Asia Congress are important for the industry? Well, in the industry there's so much happening. Um, consumer behavior is changing, technology is changing, uh, the devices are still changing, so uh, think about the whole market of wearables, um, about tablets, um, so there's a, a lot uh, which we should discuss um, and, and uh, think about new solutions which can benefit our customers, uh, not only our B2B customers, but also the put the technology in the hands of people. It's not only, uh, I would say, inventing it, innovating um, or patenting, uh, it is mainly about bringing the solutions to the customers at a low cost, very affordable. I think that's, that's why we need to discuss a lot uh, in the industry um, to see how we can further develop um, in the whole value chain uh, with the MNOs but also with the MVNOs and solution partners like us. And what are you looking forward to gaining from the conference? Um, well, I think uh, first of all we have been able um, to discuss a lot uh, during the um, MFINO World Conference in Amsterdam. So we would like to give follow-up on the discussions which we started with a lot of MVNOs who now also will participate in, in the event in Singapore. Um, so that is that is a normal conversation we have um, in the, um, with with our partners and customers. Um, on the other side, um, we were 
uh, runner-up um, of uh, one of the MVNO Innovation Awards, and of, of course we would like to win this year the MVNO uh, Innovation Award in uh, in Singapore. So uh, we are very happy to be again uh, then also in Singapore to discuss with the local MVNOs because the local MVNO typically is always depending for the roaming on the host MNO. So uh, they are bound by the tariffs which they get from their home network operator. Now. What we provide is global coverage uh, and, and, and low cost access uh, for also MVNOs. So without the need of having their own bilateral roaming relationships, um, we have a plug and play solution whereby we in this hotspot uh, put different global roaming SIM cards which give local access. So if, if the consumer is traveling to the USA, they will have local connectivity in the USA. And the same would be in Latin America or in Africa, wherever you go. This means that uh, the local MVNO, which we meet um, at the conference, doesn't have to go through the process, the whole process of uh, setting up bilaterals, technical bilateral roaming agreements with other operators nor do they have to go um, and, and purchase any uh, local SIM cards. They will leverage on the wholesale deals we have in place throughout the world and can sell that wholesale offer which we give them in retail to their own customers <coughs> combined with the device.